So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what talents you bring to the office? Thank you for the question and the opportunity to answer some of these questions for the audience. My name is Karina Villa, and I am running to be the next Illinois State Senator of the 25th District. I was a school social worker for 15 years prior to running for office. On a daily basis, I met with families who were struggling to make ends meet, families who were making decisions of whether they should pay for their uh, expensive medication for their children, or if they should uh, pay their electrical bills. Some of these families were working two jobs just to try to make ends meet. I don't think that that's right. So when it came to the cost of healthcare, access to mental health services, and just the overall cost of living for hardworking middle-class families, those were the things that compelled me to run for this seat. And the talents that I bring to the table are the same talents that I had as a school social worker. That was listening with compassion and going out and finding resources and finding ways to fix problems that everyday families were confronted with. What are your thoughts on the on changing the state's current flat income tax to a progressive tax? Changing the flat tax really makes sense. These families that I worked with, that I was just referencing, those are the families who are struggling the most and who will be most positively impacted when we change this uh, outdated system of a flat tax for people. The people who are benefiting from the system right now are the top 3%. They find ways to get out of paying their fair share. And I believe that we need to make sure that we are changing the way that we do things here in the state of Illinois in order to protect those who are uh, middle class. It is not fair that the state of Illinois is attempting to fix the issues of our state on the shoulders of those people who uh, are the most vulnerable. How do you plan on balancing the fiscal realities with the social needs of the state? Right now, Nobody would, you know, a year ago, people wouldn't have thought that we were going to be in this situation. I am currently a state representative in the 49th district, and we did many things to move forward in trying to get our state on the right path. This was pre-COVID, of course, but some of those things are really going to assist the future of the state. A few of the things that we did, uh, we made sure that we passed really comprehensive um, uh, pension reform for police and fire pensions. This was uh, a historic piece of legislation that people uh, had been trying to work on and promote for over 40 years here in the state of Illinois. We got to work in Springfield and we passed this legislation because we knew that this was going to be uh, bring benefits, financial benefits down the road for our communities. The other thing that we did was we passed um, legislation in order to be able to sell recreational cannabis. This is going to bring uh, much needed revenue to communities and we made sure that the money that was going to come in from uh, cannabis was going to be used where it was needed the most, including a topic that's very uh, near and dear to my heart, which is mental health. Um, you know, now in this COVID world and moving forward, there, the states across the United States are going to find themselves in really different, difficult predicaments. Um, financially, we all know what an impact this has had. I am going to continue to work across, reach across the aisle, uh, bring key stakeholders to the table and make decisions moving forward. If there's needed cuts uh, that, that have to be made, my top priority is going to, make, is going to uh, be to make sure that we are not cutting from those who need it the most. Um, children and adults living with disabilities, uh, seniors and people who are uh, barely making ends meet uh, and, and struggling to get by. There are people right now holding on just by a, by a thread um, to their homes or to, to where they're living. Uh, and so we need to make sure moving forward that whatever legislation we pass is not going to negatively impact the most vulnerable people. Do you support the Clean Energy Jobs Act? 
I do. I am a co-sponsor and I am, uh, I fully believe in making sure that we find sustainable solutions um, to, for, for our energy for the future. What actions are necessary to improve ethics in Springfield? As a school social worker, I am upheld by the ethics that we uh, swore by as social workers. I adhere to those same ethical practices as a state representative, and I will adhere to those same ethical practices as a state senator. I believe that there is room for ethics reform. Uh, I believe that there's ideas such as um, making sure that if uh, someone leaves the General Assembly, that somewhere between three to five years afterwards, they're not allowed to go and be lobbyists. Um, also, I believe that there should be term limits for people in position of leadership. So there are many different ways to bring about ethical reform. Again, this is a topic that I think needs um, much conversation and uh, bringing key stakeholders to the table. Do you have any final thoughts or, or closing statement? So I want to just thank everyone again for taking some time to listen to this interview to the League of Women Voters for having organized this for uh, the candidates. Um, I, you might notice that I have this little puppy here on my lap. It's Bernie. Whenever he sees that I'm talking to my camera, he always uh, wants to jump up and bark. So that's why he's been sitting on my lap today. I hope everyone stays safe. Keep wearing your masks. Um, and make sure that you uh, find a way to get yourself uh, to vote, whether it's uh, mail-in ballot, early voting, or the day of. Every vote really is going to count this upcoming election. Thank you so much.